and how they use up the funds um, for themselves, for their own operations and so on. So um, that is something that is very encouraging to us because, you know, you go after these big meetings, and one of the big things that Antigua concerned, you go after these big meetings, you spend all this money to send your officials there, and what do you get for it? But we are negotiating financing, and the finance is flowing. I can tell you that. Two years ago, I would say, no, it wasn't. It's flowing. And now all we have to do is make sure the channels that is flowing through, because we are small countries who don't want to work one-on-one -on -one with us. Mm -hmm. So they want to work on a regional level. Mm -hmm. So our regional organization have to get their act together. So the regional organization, we get half a million, send us, no, send us half a million yeah. and spend $19.5 million elsewhere. Right, right now we're negotiating a, a project. It's $988,000. Mm -hmm. And for Antigua and Barbuda, they want us to get 400000 So we ask them, what happened to what the $588,000? That they got. And this is the reaction. Well, well, you know, and you can't get a straight so answer. So there's nothing binding when they receive these monies, how the monies are divvy up to the different territories? Yes, there's something that's binding. You sign an agreement, but then after you sign the agreement, there's an attempt to amend the annexes of the agreement. Who does and that? The regional agencies, they try to... Without, 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 without course, the countries the knowing. The countries knowing. But most of the countries don't realize it. They wow. don't realize that they have an option because they've been told by the agency, listen... The donors didn't take this and that and that, but that's not true. So we're it's teaching. It's a good thing you've been going. Oh yeah, so, so we've been teaching. I was like, no, no, no. I know the rules, right? Yeah. No, it's okay, mm -hmm. and we're not going to abide by that. So for that project, there's a deliberate delay, so that we haven't been able to get our disbursement because we're not in agreement with it. And I told them there's no way that we're we going to agree to that. Nine hundred and eighty-eight thousand dollars is going to come into the bank account of Antigua and Barbuda. That's what we just want. Not we are four. buying solar panels. We mm -hmm. are buying wind turbines. We're if we have to draft legislation, we will do that too. And, you know, this is the way we're going to do it. Your, your ministry falls under the Honorable uh, Maureen Joseph? Joseph, yeah, Ministry of Health and the Environment, okay. yes. And, uh, of course, uh, Max, uh, the, the Honorable Minister of, yes. uh, of Foreign Affairs, yes. uh, he had some interactions as far as climate change is concerned when they were in China? Yes, so they had some interactions, so China is providing financing. So um, just within the context of climate change, China is China's emission greenhouse gas emission represents the largest, see, they are the largest single emitter. They've exceeded the United States. They're a big country. Big country. A lot and of it's people. Developing. And it's developing. Mm. And the reason why they have this huge emission is that, of course, they want, they use coal so that the price of their energy will remain low so they can stay competitive and they will be the manufacturer of preference for the whole world. Um, however, you know, they are friends. They're very good friends. But um, when we look at the Going back to the legislation, it's linked to a scientific report that has just been released this year. And in the previous years when the report was released, many of the, especially the United States and so on, would say, oh, we don't believe that. We need a more opinion or a second opinion and a lot of jokes about that. If you go to our Environment Division website, we, we printed them out. We placed them there so you could see this, they, they developed doubt, so you keep checking. So now every, every scientist has agreed that climate change is in fact happening and that the emissions that we are putting out for using um, carbon intensive economies is what's causing it. And when we look at what's going to happen to Antigua and Barbuda, we're going to lose all of our beaches. We're going to lose significant portions of our land mass, uh, 30 something percent of Barbuda. I remember for an island, we're losing the edges of the island and the water, the sea level is rising, will come under the island as well. So our wells in our watershed will become contaminated, even more contaminated. Yeah. They already ha it's already happening. So this is what's going to happen with to us. Mm. It's going to cost us a lot of money. And it's not a nice tale. It's not nice for me to sit here and watch my island sink. So we're friends with China. We're friends with developing countries, Brazil, India, and all of that. But their carbon is sinking us. And so this is a tough choice for a new prime minister, Prime Minister Brown and his team, to say to your friends, you're thinking we need some money for well, this you, and no, the but you're thinking enough. me. <laughs> okay, no, it's not, it's not hard to tell them. We're a little tiny island yes. of about 100,000 persons, yeah. give or take, yeah. you know. And uh, so for us to survive, right. we need you to finance us. You continue to be competitive with your coal and all that, but whatever we can do down here mm -hmm. to mitigate these factors, help us. Yeah. You, you tell your friends the truth. Like the new port that has been planned, mm -hmm. when we had looked at the, the drawings and, and we went to the DCA for the new port, 
we, when that comes in now, we're going to have to amend those drawings because according to the recently re released report, our port will be on the water. We're going to experience about one and a half meter sea level rise. So the port right now is a one and a half meter above the sea level. So you know, if you go down there, you see the drop is one, it's a meter and a half about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. That has to be higher because the water is going to come up. So to the that. new development will have to put that. Uh, they would uh, have to, to, to put that to into take that into consideration. consideration. Yes, and bill accordingly. Yeah. Well, uh, they haven't started yet, so no, they haven't started, so and this we, is the first good. time they're hearing it. So we've this been advising them when you come to the environment <laughs> division. So if you they've built in a house next to the sea, we're gonna say, I'm gonna say, Dave, I'm sorry, mm. but in ten years' time there'll be no land here. I ain't coming. I can't afford right? to be next to the sea. <laughs> and so we will tell you, we're not gonna say no, but there are the adaptation measures you'll have to put into the building, which will cost a bit more. And what we're saying to the international community, if they have to do all of this for his house. It's not his fault. You need to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So we're asking the donor community to pay for it. So the legislation is being structured. And in the middle of the legislation, is a, we are creating a new environmental fund. And we had taken, um, in the previous administration, had approved everything about the legislation, including the fund. The new administration now has, in, has done the same, and I'm going a step further to provide some resources to the fund. Because um, when we look at what is going to happen, and more and more, we're going to start the public awareness campaign shortly. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be working with ABS and everybody to put out the message. But we want to be able to, to get all of you together to craft a message. We don't want to send a message that we're going to lose Antigua and Barbuda. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. We want to say, yes, this is happening. We can't change it. But this is, um, we want to take a message of here are options. Here are the things we can do. Right. This is going to force us to become better people. Now, now, while we're at that point, before we start, because they'll have all sorts of ideas, they can give us those ideas. Yeah. But what can we do? Forget, uh, we can't stop China from burning coal because it's yeah. beneficial for their country. And there's so many people that live there in a yeah. landmass like that, Europe and all the other countries. What do we tell us in Antigua and Barbuda in the interim? Forget the legislation. Yeah. Forget all of that. Simplifying the practical things that we can do to assist ourselves. Antiguans, um, first of all, you have to adapt. So the, we, and we've been doing that because we've been hit by a lot of hurricanes compared to other countries. So we are fortunate. We have a mindset of adaptation. And we don't realize we're doing it, but we're doing it. We build our house with um, hurricane ready. We have a cistern because um, drought ready. So the drought that we have here, that is like every 10 year drought in the old time days. This is going to be every three years now. Whoa. So the cost of our water must increase because we have to desalinate more. We will have to assume in the next 10 years, 100% of our water will come from desalination. Right now, it's, it was used to be 40, now it's 60. And we're still paying the fat rate of $22 per month. That has to go, it is going to increase. I'll tell you now. APRA, maybe the government is not ready to tell you that. But from a climate change perspective, it will increase. From a um, electricity perspective, the government will need to restructure APOA and to look at the tariff that we're looking for aid for electricity. That has to be restructured. It will happen. And most likely, at our current trajectory, if we continue doing things that we're doing now, it must increase. There's no magic that any government has that will change that. So they have to restructure. So what we're saying is that for Antigua and Barbuda, when we got hit by so many hurricanes, it was awful, it was a thing, but we now build our homes properly. We have higher insurance rate that needs to be restructured. And what I'm saying is that because of climate change, it's going to provide us with the resources to restructure properly. Our we, we, we are designing something, or we are interest rates on your homes, the sections that deal with adaptation will go down. We are designing our, our work with the government in terms of the environment division to restructure, to, to provide the flow of financing to AP rates so that they can restructure. So electricity bill will go down and not up. But we have to come up with a mindset like we did after 1995 hurricane mm -hmm. to make the change and to make the switch. So we have an electricity um, regime that is in place now that a lot of people don't want to change. But whether you like it or not, an economic hurricane, category five is going to come and force you to change. In 1995, Category 5 storm came and forced us to change. So for Antigua, it's going to take a storm. Is it going to take losing a third of the country before we make a change? That is a question I ask any government or any minister. 
to oh, are you going to sit down? Are you going to sit down and say we are going to make a change? No. Are you going to upset some people? Yes. yes. Are you going to upset some rich, powerful people? Yes. Yes. <laughs> are you going to upset poor voters that command thousands of votes? Yes. Yes. But we're saving the country. But you have to. And then the thing <laughs> is, is that I think people just want an explanation. Why are we doing this? And Antigua, people are not stupid. You know, they understand certain things. They understand life, and they, they, you know, and then you have Twitter, you have email, you have. So if you don't understand, there are ten well people out there who will tell you, and they go online and they check, and so we, you know, they want to be told the truth. It's Wednesday. Yes. I want you to leave this set with some good news for <laughs> yes. us. Folks don't like it. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying. The, the, the good news is that we can get this thing done. Yes. If we all put our mind to it and make the little subtle changes. Yes. Like and the I'm, light bulbs, like yes. turning off the electricity when you ought to, like yes. plugging up the things when you ought to, yes. fixing the drip water pipe or hose or anything yes. like that. Those are little things we can and do. And good news. Yes, tell me the good news. This year, the electric cars, electric cars for the first time, it's a bit closer, like a big jump closer yeah. to the cost of a gasoline car. So you By 2018, mm. you'll be able to buy an electric car. When you work at out the cost? customer at a reasonable cost, mm. the Environment Division is right now, we'll be acquiring an electric minibus, just to show everybody, they're electric SUVs. Mm. And so- They look good? They look good. It looks <laughs> just like a RAV4. Uh -huh. And I saw the electric SUV um, BMW. Mm. Wow, that looks good. So the so, future looks good? I mean, it's going to force us to change and change for the better. This is what I'm saying. Unfortunately, we don't, you know, human beings don't change because it's time. It's time for change, you know. We just change because you have to slap us up the face and give you a hurricane category five storm. And so this is how we are. We don't want a hurricane. <laughs> we don't the want fact that. We're saying that uh, it's going to seep into the water and the, 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 um, the areas around us are uh, uh, sinking and uh, the water beds are getting sorted and all that. We need to do something right. now. So the legislation is drafted and the core of it is a financial mechanism mm. that would not say, you know, I said, Dave, I would like you to change your car to an electric car. But here it is. I'm going to give you a 3% loan. Yeah, you told me that and we're going to do yeah, this and stuff like that. So we're going to incentivize change uh -huh. rather than waiting for a Category 5 hurricane to get no you some blues, five. right? We don't even We've want been there. One. We've done that. Yeah. Yes. So we're going the to use, we're going to incentivize it. Right. So that is what we are working towards. Mm -hmm. So when we pass the legislation, it, the whole point of it is to draft a strategy around the legislation so there is an incentive to, ch to, to get you to change. Well, thanks for being with us this mm. morning. Of course, have you traveled recently? I've been tra I travel a lot. I know. And I've been home for three weeks, and I'm so excited to be home for three weeks. How's your son? <laughs> I have two sons and a daughter. Uh, well, well, okay. Well, how are they? They're fine. Okay, They're good. doing very well. Uh, every Thank time you. I remember you talk about that school and the things that are happening. Hannah, are they, are they yes, getting better? My daughter. Yes, my okay. schools are getting better. The school is getting better. They're mm. still struggling, the Victory Center. Mm. Um, you know, they're still reaching out. So if anybody today listening to this and you have a few dollars you want to donate to the school, they will really, really appreciate it. He's a new it. minister of education. You should speak I to know. Him. I'm going to track him down because yeah. um, some of the children are unable to pay their school fee. Yeah. And, you know, they have to take a decision because they have to pay the teachers and so on. And, you know, it breaks all of our heart that we, the, 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 the school, you know, the principal have to tell them to stay home. Mm -hmm. These are special need kids and they look forward to seeing their friends and and so on and so we are I mean we are we have some ideas that we're working on and we're gonna keep pushing them so if anybody can the cost of a school fee for a child for one month is eight hundred dollars those are special needs children that's for special needs children and we're mm -hmm. trying to work with the government so that it can become a regular school fee mm -hmm. so if you normally pay a thousand dollars a term at a regular school then that is what we, we should pay mm -hmm. so we're going to be working with them we need a new building and um, you know, but we're trying our best to keep it afloat and we believe that it's, I mean, we, we know that things are going to change. We just, um, you know, we just have to be patient, but things are going to get better. Well, we're glad that. That's the good news we're going to yes, end with. Things yes. are going to get better. Yeah. Thanks for speaking with us this Thank morning. Thank you for having Always me. Always a pleasure to have yes. you here with us. Give your family our best regards. And Thank of you. course, uh, the uh, Environment Division. Tell yes, them we I will tell them. you. I will tell them. Okay. It's good morning, Antigua Barbuda. Stay with us for our closing moments.